Hello gamers, welcome back to Wargaming Wisdom, where we try to be a better wargamer every day. Today we're talking about threat ranges, and I'll be using Battletech as my main example, but this applies to virtually all wargames. So I've set up this little game, and I'm going to use it to show you what threat ranges are and how you need to be aware of them to play the most effective game. So the enemy has a lot of long-range missiles. They've got the Partisan Tank, and they've got a Longbow. Now, on a map this small, you're pretty much going to be in that long range immediately. And since we have a lot more units that specialize in getting up close, we need to rush down the opponent. But let's look at the threat range on the Longbow. It has 4-6 movement, so it can run 6. So we're going to count those spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it can threaten me from here, and that's going to give them... A a range of 14 so essentially we're just going to move this medium range up by about five hexes one two three four five so the longbow can get into medium range of the area right in front of the charger so on this first turn I don't want to move that close I don't want to run in there with the Wolverine I have sprinting on so I can actually get into that area in front of the charger but I'm gonna stick here near the charger so that I don't get in medium range of those LRMs that sensor return up there is another enemy mech I know it's an atlas because I put together this force so I have to be cognizant now of the atlas's threat ranges where it can get to on its next turn because I don't want to get flanked by an atlas it has an AC 20 and SRMs it's gonna do some real damage okay so the longbow moved up it ran up and my calculations were a little bit off I am actually in medium range so this is an example of why you want to be very careful and not just do a sloppy quick measurement to see where the threat ranges are because I could have closed in more with the Wolverine and still been at that medium range getting my firepower closer faster without granting my enemy any real benefit so now here we are at turn two and this is where the threat ranges really start becoming important so the Atlas has three five movement so it can move up into this forest one two three four five it's going to be shooting through a lot of forests, so I'm not super concerned about that this turn. But the turn after that, then I have to really start worrying about the Atlas's weapons and its melee potential, because Atlas's do a lot of melee damage. 20 damage kicks are no joke. Now, on this turn, I also have to be concerned about the Hunchback. The Hunchback can also come in. It's got a heck of a lot of medium lasers, and it can kick. So with this number of medium lasers, my Wolverine has to be very careful about engaging with this Hunchback. And it has a movement of six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. If I run to here, this Hunchback can run up on me, and it will probably knock me over with a PSR from all the medium laser fire, plus a bunch of LRMs that are going to be coming at me most likely. So I have to be cognizant of that threat range. So instead of doing that, I'll go down here, because now the Hunchback can go one, two, three, four, five, and then turn for six. So it's not going to be able to get into melee with me if it knocks me over. And I can still get my Wolverine's medium lasers into range. Unless I really hold back, I won't be able to escape the wrath of the Hunchback 4P with its eight medium lasers. But at least I won't get kicked while knocked down if I go here. Now, my catapult has a couple of options here. It's in long range of the Partisan and the Longbow. So it has pretty good defenses against those long range LRMs. And the Hunchback is guaranteed to get into my medium threat range when it moves forward. If you have an enemy unit that's in a great support spot, maybe the Longbow is hiding in this woods. It's got a great sight line to the battlefield and it just wants to stay there. You can move into its long range, move away from it, to try and force it out of that cover, and then you have an easier time of dealing with it. In a lot of war games, you have aiming bonuses if you stand still with a ranged unit. For example, in War Machine and Hordes, if you stand still, you can aim, you get a bonus to your hit rolls with your ranged weapons. So ideally, you want to force your enemy to walk forward with their shooting units so that they don't hit with as many of their ranged attacks. Now, I have moved forward here because if the Hunchback chooses to stay in that forest, now I have short range and 
I don't have any blocking terrain in the way. Yes, I've moved my catapult forward and now it's exposed, but it has enough armor that it can take a round of shooting from the partisan and longbow, and it can then just fall back and continue supporting from long range with LRMs. The charger is very interesting because I have a feeling that I know where the Atlas wants to go. It's going to go one, two, three, four, five. It's going to go right into this light woods here so that it can have clear line of sight. It's going to fire off its AC-20 and SRM's medium lasers. And I want to place the charger in a position to charge it. I'm going to sort of run around in a circle with the charger to generate some TMM. But what if the Atlas instead only moves forward into this forest? So we'll move one up. Now we're only six hexes away from this, but we're seven hexes away from this space. So we can still charge if we get in there. Now it's possible that the longbow might be moved in front so that it blocks the charge lane. If so, no big deal. We just charge the longbow instead. Now, if you're looking at the end of the turn here, you might say, well, the hunchback didn't move into your ideal location that you wanted it to. But because I understood how it could move, I instead forced it to move over here, a less advantageous position. Now it can't flank around behind to be as easily because it has to turn first and then move and the incoming shots at my wolverine are going to be less effective now i took the catapult on purpose to show you that some units have multiple different threat ranges every mech in battletech has a melee threat range it's when they can get in adjacent to you but switch hitter mechs like the catapult have two different threat ranges it has the long range of its lrms which on average do about 15 damage but then it has the medium laser threat range, which does 20 damage, assuming everything hits. So let's say I run this forward, I can now threaten short range on this forest, or if I stay still, I'm automatically threatening medium range on this, and I can threaten medium range on these woods back here as well, if I need to. So you have to be cognizant of all the weapons that an enemy unit has. So let's say you're facing Space Marines in 40k and you've got a tactical squad that has a LAS cannon and a bunch of bolters. That unit is much more dangerous once it gets up really close in like 12 inches, but it still has that long range threat of the LAS cannon that it can project. Now I've moved my Wolverine forward to engage the enemy backline units, but the Hunchback has turned around and gotten into melee with me where I can't kick it back. Now I was aware of this, but I just wanted to show you. This is what happens when you ignore something's threat range. The Hunchback was down here. It can run around behind me and now do a kick without me being able to kick it back. Now I, I can turn around and punch the Hunchback, but punches are less effective overall than kicks. And I have two arm mounted weapons, so this is all bad for me. However, on the bright side, my Charger has a good amount of movement. It can run around here, get behind the Hunchback and take some rear shots with its small lasers. So just looking at the armor, you can see that we got some shots taken at us. Our Wolverine got beat up pretty badly, but in return, we beat up the Hunchback really well and we did some damage to the Longbow. And luckily we avoided falling down, but so did the Hunchback. So we're going to get to have a punch and we get to have a kick as well. And there we go. We've knocked down the Hunchback with our kick from behind. It luckily missed our Wolverine. It probably should have hit and knocked it down, which would have left our Wolverine in a very vulnerable position. Now, if we were to continue, I would have to start worrying about the Atlas's threat range, like I said. But now the enemy has to be concerned about several things. The Charger's melee threat range is right on top of them. The Wolverine as well. The Battlemaster is coming in pretty quick here with its short range weapons and its kicks. But you can really use threat ranges to manipulate your opponent. And once you understand where your opponent can get to and where their weapons are going to be more effective, especially on bigger maps, you can really use that to your advantage. So, I hope this helps gamers. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. I love to hear from all of my subscribers. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.